How are you doing? Ah, great. It's uh, summer's been quite long. I think that this is the third last festival of yeah. the summer. And, uh, but summer's still going strong. Today yeah. it's 28 Celsius, so it's, it's pretty nice. Unfortunately, now it's raining, but it will yeah. stop before we start. Yeah. Let's hope. Yeah, waiting for the show. Yeah, great. So let's talk about your new album, Hello. Hello. Do it in English. We call it Hello. Okay, so it's fine. So, what can you tell about its genesis and lyrics? Well, not that much. I, I mostly concentrate on the composing and uh, playing my parts. But uh, I know it's still Pekka's uh, visions about uh, Finnish mythology. But, and, and there's a couple of stories which are related to. Like the first song, we start, the, the album starts with the song Northwards, and uh, where people somewhere come to the north and try to start to find find the place to live, you know, figure out what's really going on. And uh, then there's a couple of love songs which also relate to the uh, settling to the new place and uh, a lot of stuff, you know. Yeah. Figuring out what, uh, finding out what the moon represents to yeah. a person or stuff, stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's talk about the cover art of the album. It's uh, really amorphous, as I would say, <laughs> but it's uh, recognizable. Um, who is the artist and what's the the idea behind it? There is any idea? Or well, the artist is the Spal Noir from France. The, uh, he's been working with us since uh, Under Red Cloud and Queen of Time. And, uh, now he also did the Halo. Uh, he never explained to us exactly what's really behind it, but uh, we gave him some lyrics as a starting point. And uh, I think there's some sort of a mixture about the diversities from the album, like the good, good sides, good, good parts of life and bad parts of life, moon and sun, you know, good versus evil and, you know, depression yeah. versus happiness, you know, all these contradictions, you know, which, yeah. which appear in the lyrics. Also in the album, you did the collaboration with uh, uh, Petronella Nettermann. Mm. Um, how did it happen, the collaboration? Well, it's a pretty simple story. It's, it was uh, Jens Bogren who produced the album again. Uh, he suggested it us already in the pre-production phase, like when he heard the demo version of the My Name is Night song. And he said like immediately he started to think that it could be like kind of like a duet. And, uh, he had been working with Petronella okay. and uh, he was really excited about her voice and uh, we, nowadays we have like a style and tendency that we like to let the producer make the selections and do whatever he wants because uh, it gives us some sort of a surprise moment and uh, he's very professional so we don't have to intervene not that much so we just told it like uh, Let's go for it and let's, yeah. see, let's see how it turns out to be. And he just said, like, trust me. And uh, of course, we listened to Bersonella's band and we, we obviously heard that she's a great singer and she has a great unique voice. Yeah. But uh, on the, see, to, see, to say it as simple as possible, we just get free hands to yes, okay. to try out Bersonella and uh, it turned out to be fantastic. Yeah, it was a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> The song is really, the, the whole album is great. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, yeah. I think the first idea was that uh, we normally don't put ballads to the albums anymore. I think the last ballads we had were probably in the, more than 10 years ago. Her Law was ballad, I think, that had uh, some sort of ballad. But uh, it turned out to be so good that uh, everybody thought and the producer thought that it has to be on the album and that why not? to be the last track because the whole album is such a uh, forward-going 
like a metal madness, so it's nice to end it up with, uh, instead of some sort of intermission, it's better to end it up with a nice atmosphere. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. So you have, you have been touring all the summer, and now you are going to tour uh, to in Europe. Uh, you have a co headline tour with Eluve uh, Itie, and then there is Dark Tranquility and and uh, Net Net Jobs Tour. Yeah. Yeah, we toured with them. Actually, we've toured them with them all except Elevate. Okay. So it's first time with Elevate. And uh, yeah, it's going to be a long tour, I think 30 shows total. Yeah. And almost about Europe. Yeah. 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 I, I saw that there is a lot of dates. Yeah, we are really excited because we only done the US tour, which was a little bit shorter than normally. I think it was 20, less than 25 shows. And now we have like a normal festival season, so almost every weekend one or two shows. Yeah. So the real real touring starts in the autumn and yeah. we're going to do the European tour. And I hope after that we can do more shows in Finland because so far we only had the chance to do the festivals. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's all. And the, the tour with Eluve uh, ETA is going to be really really great at least for people that are going to see you there are all good bands there yeah there's so, a lot of good bands you know and a lot of uh, variety yeah, you know so, something for everyone and uh, it's gonna be a very nice package yeah and, um, as i said we never toured with that way yeah, i'm really looking forward to it yeah yeah and, uh, that's nice 30 shows is Good enough. You know. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not too short. <laughs> it yeah. takes, takes all the November to December, yeah. then it's Christmas. Yeah. So, uh, your uh, official biography by Marcus Laxo uh, was also released in English? Um, I, think it's, I think it's coming coming in the fall. Okay. It's still not out. I think I haven't really been paying attention when, when the actual release is, yeah. but I know it's coming. Yeah. yeah, and this was released in Finnish last year. Am, no, I, it's, am it's, I wrong? No, it's released in Finnish maybe five years ago. Five years ago. Uh, or okay. more, or more. And then there is a German translation. Okay. A couple of years ago, and now we finally got it out in English. Okay, so fans are waiting for it. Yeah, all, almost all our fan base is covered after that. Yeah. <laughs> There's still some. Food. We Some should. countries, but yeah, but step by step. But most of the people can read English. Yeah, true. Yeah. So, so go and buy it. We are really happy about it that we finally got it so, to yeah. all the rest than German and Finnish people. But yeah. Nobody else does Finnish, so it's pretty minor. And German is only for Central European people. So now we now the people can read what's been happening since the nineties. Like really, it's it's really deep. Biography and uh, looking forward to what people think about it. Yeah. yeah, we wait for you for your response. <laughs> Absolutely. So you also did a, a collaboration uh, with uh, Book Watches. Oh yeah. And um, how did it happen? It's interesting <laughs> because I I have seen bands doing beers. Yeah, you have your beers. Yeah, a doing coffee and a lot of things, but the watch thing was something new. Well, it's there's no real story behind it. Uh, Finland is a very small country and there's uh, we have a company, an independent company who makes like uh, wristwatches in the in Joen, so it's actually the other side of Finland, pretty long. Yeah. And uh, I think they've been working with uh, not with metal bands before, but they are they like metal music, and they've been uh, trying to find a way to put up uh, like uh, items to also to the like a rockier items, not just about sailing and fishing. You know, so maybe Amorphis was a good opportunity to come into something extraordinary for them. Yeah. yeah, and uh, the collaboration was great. All the all the watches sold out in a few weeks, yeah. and it was limited edition, so 
I don't think I don't think it's possible to buy them. Yeah, anymore. Except if someone puts on sale yeah, yeah. with super high price, probably. Well, super high. <laughs> it was pretty, it was pretty high price on yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. But, but they yeah. can make more expensive yeah. ones. Yeah, I got my own copies a couple of days ago, maybe two weeks ago or something. Okay. But I still haven't uh, put, on. put it on. But I will. Yeah. I, I never. I, I since. I think last time I had the, like a wristwatch was in the 80s, you know, with the yeah. ping, pong, ping pong game and the real <laughs> keyboard ABC stuff. But I lost it and ever since I was so disappointed. But now I will now start Now you, you have the new ones. So. Yeah, and it's good to have some iron. Yeah, 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 yeah. So now a tricky question for every musician. Uh, you have a lot of albums, a lot of songs, but... Do you have a favorite song to play live? A song that you enjoy most? Oh, of course I do. They change a lot, you know, and sometimes they are the safest, sometimes they are not. But uh, let's put it this way I like to play the songs where there's a lot of happening, you know? Yeah. Like a keyboard solo. I don't mind if there's not so many, but if, if there's a song in a set list with uh, particular part for the keyboards, it's always nice because it's challenging and it gives you some sort of a pressure. Yeah. But uh, let, let's say like the most boring, boring songs for me are just the, the very simple, easy songs. On the other hand, normally the audience seems to like them most, so it's there's a kind of a other side is that uh, like House of Sleeves. Uh, actually, there is a keyboard solo, but it's more like an atmospheric part. But, uh, yeah, the simple songs are not that cool to play when when the, it's the 500th time you play the song. Yeah. On the other hand, when you see the people's reaction, you always get, yeah, yeah. get super happy and uh, emotional, and then it then you enjoy the song. Yeah. But if you, if you go to the rehearsing place, we try to normally concentrate on the songs which there's a lot of things happening and they are really there's a technical. Difficulties, so but we don't normally play Silver Bride or House of Sleep in a rehearsing place. On the other hand, we played them maybe 1500 times, so you know, you, we don't yeah. have to. But, uh, but I, I like the songs, you know, with the technical challenges, like the bees, nice because I have a lot of shit going on there and I have to keep the delay groove on time, you know, and it's not that simple because as I also play some sort of a in their life and uh, Heart of the Giant is cool because it's a really ongoing song. N now in the new set I like the moon. It's it's still even though even though we played it already like forty times, it's it's still there's always some you know like uh, ten, uh, you are, you are some pressure, you know, yeah. because it's very progressive and very complex song. If you if you start going too much to your own ways it, it, Collapses like a, yeah. like a tree, but so far it's it's been good and it's it's getting there. Let's put it this way. Yeah, yeah, nice. So you have a lot of ex experience. Uh, uh, if you would like to give an advice to bands that are starting nowadays, what it would be? In in what way? Playing wise or business wise or uh, general. Uh, the general. It's uh, the general. Is the well, one. it's it's musically. Uh, let's, let's stay on the music well, side. Well, learn the songs, of course. You know, uh, play together with uh, even if your your personal skill is super high. You know, it's still not the same when there's five or six people playing. And on the on the other hand. Uh, the environment where you play, you know, like a really small stage with no soundtrack or like a huge festival stage, it's totally different situation. So the better you know that your songs, better you know your arrangements, and you play together super well, it helps a lot when the when the environment changes. You know, there might be like you can you probably won't hear anything. You know, we hear some drums or you go hear a keyboard or guitar. And the it's such a different uh, environment when you come on a stage, small stage to mid-sized stage or the big stage. So get the songs right. Yeah. Yeah. There is no, there is no possibility that 
like over practicing. Yeah. It's, it's, and when, when, you, when you are young and you build a band, that then is the time to build up, the, get you onto the professional level. Even though if you don't even have an album out, it's good to practice your asses off because later on you probably might not have time to practice because you are all about touring or people get families and you know some guys go to the job and they have a job you know so there's but when you are young from 20s to 25 well 18 to 25 you have a lot of spare time and you used to try to practice be clever yeah and play it as often as possible with your band and with your friends and, and go jamming and you know and enjoy it. Yeah, and yeah, it, it's, it's quite obvious. It's very it's, if <laughs> no. it's not fun, which, but uh, yeah, we did that in the in the nineties. That basically all we did was play music together, and uh, yeah. no matter band, but mostly the main band. You know, you just play and play and play because, and thank God we did it because uh, you, you don't know what to expect. You know, yeah. there, there's a lot of situations where. That it's pretty hard to hump on a stage without a sound check with a shitty sound within some weird place. So it helps to get to have yeah, things the going. Experience. Yeah, you know how they go, and you can play them even if you, you hear it, don't hear anything. Like only the snare drum. Or something. Yeah. So what's the plan for the future for the Morphis? Hopefully, touring, touring, touring. Uh, as I said, we finished the festival season. I think Summer Breeze is the last one. Then we have a couple of shows in Finland that one cruise, metal cruise, radio rock cruise. Then we do the European tour, then we continue with the Finnish shows. After that, I really haven't seen what we're going to do, but I think we are looking for possibilities to go maybe to Japan, if it's possible, or South America, or another European tour or American tour. I don't know, it's it's really not up to us. But let's say I hope at least one and a half years we can just go touring. Yeah. Because the Halo is a strong album and it we have to tour with it, you know. We have to I, I, I wouldn't like to think that we're gonna make an, another album soon. Yeah. It, because it's it's a hard work and the most fun part is the touring, so I'm hoping that uh, at least one and a half years we can just tour around the world yeah. and do some special things, of course. You know, there's also, yeah. also a, lot of, a lot of ideas like outside of music, but uh, I'm not allowed to talk about that. But uh, anything we have to wait. Any, anything with what has to do with uh, building up a career and make make a lot of fun while doing it. You know? Yeah. But I hope a lot of shows. Yeah, that's finger crossed that nothing else happened. Uh, no, no more pandemics. Yeah, yeah, we had enough of, about that. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you so much for your time. It was really a pleasure. Uh, would you like to say something to your fans? Well, enjoy live music. Now it's possible again because the fucking COVID is gone, hopefully. Uh, enjoy all the live shows, go to see the bands and uh, listen to good music and uh, check out our new album Halo. It's our 14th album and it's we are going even faster than ever before. See you on the tour.